السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello and welcome everyone The next topic on the MBC 226 course is water, pH and buffers We will devote two to three lectures describing this topic. The topic is covered in details in the book Harper's Illustrated Biochemistry 29th edition pages 14 to 26. This is the next major topic in the MBC 226 course. In these lectures, we will look at homeostasis, how to define it, what is the meaning of homeostasis. We will then look at medical relevance and importance of water together with the structure and function of water. Why, how much water is present in our body. Why water is so important for us when we are talking about the structure and function of water. We will look at the importance and relevance of water. In particular, we will look at the medical relevance. Why for medical students it is important to study water. Then we will look at the dissociation of water, how water comes apart, how the water molecule splits, how we get acids and bases, what are acids and bases. Again, when we look at the dissociation of water and when we look at acids and bases, we will be looking at the medical relevance and the importance of dissociation of water and the body pH. Then we will go on to describe what is pH, what is the meaning, what is the definition, how to calculate pH. Also we will be looking at concentrations of the concentration of other species like base OH minus or carbon dioxide or carbonic acid bicarbonate. When we look at the concentration of other dissociated and undissociated species, we will be using an important equation called Henderson Hasselbach equation. So, we will look at the definition and we will explain what is the meaning of henderson hasselbach equation and how it can be used to calculate pH, to calculate the dissociation constant of an acid, to calculate the concentration of dissociated and undissociated species. Later on, we will devote some time to looking at buffers. What are buffers? How they are defined? What are their examples in our body? We will look at these examples when we come to look at buffers, when we come to describe buffers. At the end, we will also mention some medical relevance and importance of buffers. So homeostasis, let us start by defining homeostasis. It is actually a system which is dynamic, meaning which is in movement and changing all the time that defines the distribution of water in our body. How water is distributed inside the cell, outside the cell, how the pH is maintained in our body, how the concentrations of other species are maintained. So at the moment, we can define homeostasis as the dynamic that defines the distribution of water 
and the maintenance of pH, keeping a constant pH or keeping the required pH. We will describe what is the meaning of pH later on and also maintaining the electrolyte concentration. Anionic cationic concentration, how our body maintains that and keeps everything into balance. This is the definition of homeostasis. Another definition for homeostasis is the distribution of water maintained by organs in our body like kidneys and controlled and maintained by hormones in our body and also a response from our body. For example, when we feel thirsty, this is a response in our body to say water is becoming less, so we should drink more water or we perspire to keep ourselves cool or respire to breathe in oxygen, to breathe in carbon dioxide, to breathe in. The breathing mechanism is also part of the control of homeostasis. So homeostasis can also be defined as the distribution of water maintained by organs, maintained by hormones and maintained by response from our body. So this is the definition of homeostasis. Why it is so clinically important for medical students? Well, there are conditions in our body where the water can become less or the water can become in excess, water can become too much. So these two conditions are clinically important. This is why as doctors we should be aware of cases and causes and incidents or uh, behavior of people or behavior of patients when the water can become depleted less or when the water can become excess. So on this slide I am describing to you for example a person goes into coma or he goes wandering into the hot weather, into the desert and he does not take water, he does not intake water, therefore water can become less. Sometimes a person may have system, symptoms of diarrhea or cases of diarrhea where he is losing extra water from his body or maybe there is renal malfunction or a person may be over exercising, too much exercise. So therefore water will become less and less in his body. So we as doctors or we as clinicians, we need to compensate for the loss in the water by giving appropriate amounts of water to this patient. Sometimes the water can become more. For example, a person may take too much water intravenously or just by drinking too much or maybe he is decreasing the excre excretion. So there may be renal failure and he is not excreting or taking out from his body the waste water. So therefore inside his body water can become more. So these are two conditions why we need to make sure that the homeostasis is going on in a balanced nature, balanced way. Okay, so, so far we have defined what is homeostasis and we have explained the clinical relevance and important why and why we have water depleted or why we can have water in excess. In our body there is plenty of water. Approximately 70% of our body weight and body mass is water. So water is a very important molecule. There may be up to 60% intracellular water and there may be 25% uh, extracellular water. If you look at blood in our body, blood is almost 90% water. So why water is so important? There are some properties of water, some properties of water that make the, makes it an excellent molecule that we in our body use. One of the thing which is 
chemi chemistry in nature is that the molecule itself has some partial negative and positive charges. Why does this occur? Because the molecule is dipolar. The oxygen, we will see some diagrams in a minute. The oxygen in the molecule of water is electronegative. It attracts the oxygens and it pulls the oxygen power. It pulls the electrons uh, towards it, making it electronegative. The oxygen atom pulls the electron density to make it slightly electronegative and of having negative charge. Similarly, the hydrogens, they have partial positive charges. So, there are within the molecule some partial negative and positive charges. This partial negative charge and partial positive charge leads to the formation of many non-covalent, please note, non-covalent low energy long hydrogen bonds, long range hydrogen bonds. Many, many hydrogen bonds are produced or they exist in liquid water, in solid water, in ice. These non-covalent bonds are between high, between water molecules, i.e. between one molecule and another molecule or surrounding water molecules. As regards to a water molecule by itself, within or inside the water molecule, we have covalent bonding. Covalent bonds are strong. They are short and they are high energy. They require high amounts of energy to break and make. So, there is a difference between covalent bonds and non-covalent bonds. Non-covalent bonds, we can say they are just attractions or interactions between molecules simply by coming close to each other. When molecules come close to each other, they may have some different types of interactions or attractions and these are the non-covalent bonds. In the water or in the uh, water, the water molecules when they are in the liquid form or when they are in the solid ice form, there are lots of molecules close to each other. So, this uh, gives a good chance for lots of hydrogen bonding to take place, which are non-covalent bonding. These non-covalent bonds give some very excellent and very useful properties to the water. Let us before we discuss and before we see the actual pictures of the structure of water and the nature of this covalent and non-covalent bonding describe some of the medical importance why water is so important. Of course, as I said before, water is found throughout the body inside and outside the cell and water is so important for all the body functions that take place in our body. Our blood, for example, contains 90 percent water and our body weight, if a person is weighing 100 kilograms, approximately 60 to 70 kilogram body weight is just water. Water carries lots of nourishment and useful molecules and useful uh, required molecules by our body for a living cell. So, water goes around our system carrying this nourishment and carrying these useful molecules. The nourishment for our body cells and waste products that are formed in connection with metabolism are transported within the water. So, water becomes an excellent solvent, an excellent uh, place where lots of these reactions can take place. Water that we drink or that we have in our body must be pure because if the water is polluted, or if the water is carrying some viruses, some bacteria, then of course this will 
upset our body and give us symptoms of malfunction. So, water must be so pure that the organism's various cells are not damaged. Under normal condition, a human being, a person per day needs about 2 liters of water, 1.5 to 2.5 liters of water depending on his environment and his work condition. So, if the water is not pure and it is polluted, maybe because of this pollution or because of this water not being pure, this poses a significant, significant health risk. So, these are some points that I discussed to you now before we actually look at the structure of water and the properties of water, why water is so important medically, why medical students need to know about water as a molecule and water as a solvent and water as a substance in our body. Okay? So, here are some pictures that describe the structure of water. So, water is a bent molecule, it is not a straight 180 degrees, no, between oxygen and the two hydrogen uh, within the molecule, there is an angle of 105 degrees, as you see in the middle left. And the top left picture shows us the full structure of water, which is tetrahedral. The shape is tetrahedral and you will see some delta minus and delta positive indicating on the hydrogens and the oxygen indicated on the oxygens. These reflect the partial negative and positive charges. So, on the bottom left of your picture, we see two water molecules and we see the interaction between this molecule which is the hydrogen bond. If you look at the distance or the length of the hydrogen bond, we can see it is 0.177, almost 0.2 approximately nanometers, whereas the covalent bond is 0.1. So, you see as I said, the non-covalent bonds are long, covalent bonds are short non-covalent bond, which is the hydrogen bond in our example here, when the molecules of water come close to each other like in ice and the picture that is shown to you on the right hand side shows you lots of hydrogen bonds because the molecules come so close together in, an, in the solid form, in the ice form. So, in the ice form, a molecule of water in the middle of the lattice middle of the solid, you can see that it can have up to four non-covalent hydrogen attractions or hydrogen bonds. Okay? So, in this picture, we are looking at the structure of water. It is a tetrahedral structure or it is a bent structure and there are lots of hydrogen bonds depending on the state or the phase or the physical state of the water. When water is a gas, then water molecules are far away, so they will not have so many hydrogen bonds. When water is a liquid, the molecules are coming in close proximity to each other, therefore the number of hydrogen bonds will increase. Similarly, when water becomes ice, then in the ice form or the solid form, there are lots of molecules close to each other. Therefore, we will have lots of hydrogen bonds. What are the properties of water? Water is a very polar molecule showing partial, po partial positive negative charges. The oxygen is highly electronegative. The hydrogen bond is a donor and an acceptor. Okay. Electrons can be donated, electrons can be accepted by this molecule and this gives some very, very good and important properties to the water. For example, the boiling point of this water, pure water is very high, it is almost 100 degrees centigrade. 
the melting point of a molecule such as water or the substance such as water is also very high. Similarly, the heat of vaporization and the surface tension all these are good properties that we will need in our body for many many processes and reactions to take place. Okay. When we take water for example, when we are making wudu, one can see that water stays stuck to our body for a while. It does not evaporate very quickly. It sticks to our body. So, this is surface tension. Okay then it takes a while before this water will evaporate. Also, the water uh, has a high heat of vaporization. So, it takes time before water will leave or evaporate from your body. So, water has these properties because water molecules show lots of non-covalent hydrogen bonds. All these properties are due to having many, many hydrogen non-covalent bonds between molecules. Therefore, the water is a liquid at room temperature. It can be an excellent solvent. Lots of processes and reactions and molecules and ions can dissolve, can behave in the water. In our body, we need lots and lots of reactions. These reactions will be accommodated these reactions will be able to uh, find their way uh, in our in the water in our body because water is letting all these molecules and ions and processes to take place or to react okay so these are properties of water so far what we have discussed is the structure of water the nat nature of the bonding covalent non covalent bonding and now some of the properties here is an example to show you how sodium chloride dissolves in the water. So, water allows polar compounds to dissolve. What we see in this picture is if we have solid sodium chloride and we put it in water, we throw it in water, then what happens? Sodium and chloride, they dissociate from each other, they dissolve forming sodium plus and sodium plus ions and chloride minus ions and these ions cations and anions they get surrounded by the water molecules because water molecules are in plenty in the water there are plenty of water molecules therefore the sodium plus is happy when the electronegative part the oxygen part of the water is facing the sodium plus and the H pluses or the H partial positive charge on the hydrogens in the water molecule, they are able to accommodate the chloride minus ion. So, what do we have around the sodium plus ion and the chloride minus ion? There are water molecules. So, there is a shell a region a region around the ions where water molecules are accommodating or helping these molecule these ions to remain for their function in the water so there is a hydration shell we can call these sodium plus hydrated or hydrated sodium plus ion or hydrated chloride minus ion so what does water allow the ionic and the polar compounds to do ionic and polar compounds they dissolve in the water so this is one good quality of the water one good property of the water water allows ionic things to dissolve when we have substances that are non-polar or they are insoluble in water but they have parts part of the molecule is liking water polar head hydrophilic and part of the molecule as you see on the left is non-polar tail non-polar long chain hydrophobic they do not like water. So, such a molecule will not dissolve in the water however 
water can accommodate and look after these molecules. These are examples of, for example, lipids in our body. Lipids are double-headed, uh, one head or one part, double parts. One part likes water, one part does not like water. So how will they behave in the water? How will water accommodate such molecules? Water will allow these molecules to organize themselves rather than dissolve. They will not dissolve. They will organize into layers. So we may have monolayer, dilayer on the right hand side I am showing you how these molecules that are having two parts, they are stuck together to each other, has a head which is hydrophilic, has a tail which is hydrophobic, they organize themselves in the water or water allows these molecules to organize either into layers like phospholipid bilayers that we find in biological membranes or they organize themselves into micelles. Micelles are shown on the bottom right hand side of the slide. Okay, so these are structures of molecules that are organized in water when they are thrown, when they are put into water. So lipids, bile salts are examples of micelles, examples of layers in our body. Okay, so, so far what we have seen, ionic things dissolve in the water, non-polar substances which are insoluble in water, they organize themselves in the water into layers or micelles. Here is another example of sodium chloride dissolving in the water, how the sodium plus and the chloride minus become hydrated, how water molecules surround themselves around the chloride anion or the sodium cation, how nonpolar molecules such as a phospholipid which is hydrophilic, hydrophobic, how they arrange themselves in the water or how they become organized, how water molecules surround them and accommodate them is shown in this slide and the next slide how they become layers or how they become micelles. So micelles can be formed in the water or bilayers or layers can be formed by molecules such as a phospholipid. An example of micelles is how soap or detergent works. When we have eaten, for example, in a restaurant or when we have eaten oily things and we have fat on our hands and we would like to wash them, then just water will not clean your hands. Just the sabun itself or just the detergent or the soap itself will not wash you will have to first make the micelles by taking some detergent, some soap and some warm water and mix it together to form the micelles. Once the micelles are formed from a sulfonate group and a hydrophobic long chain, okay, then now you can use this micelles to clean the fat or the grease that is on your hand thereby cleaning your hand. This micelle formation is very essential in our body, a medical importance. I have given you in the paragraph on the bottom of this slide, very essential for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins for example and complicated lipids within our human body. The bile salts that are formed in the liver and secreted by the gallbladder, they allow micelles of fatty acids to form. And it allows the absorption of complicated lipids such as lecithin and lipid soluble vitamins A, D, E, K. Later on, on the 2 to 7 course, you will discuss vitamins and you will realize how they are fat soluble and how they are carried and how they play an important role in our body.
okay so so far another good property of water is that it allows non polar or fatty and non uh, polar groups molecules such as the phospholipid how they can become organized in the water how ionic things dissolve in the water these are properties of water so in this picture that i'm showing you now the slide we can summarize the structure of water the we can see the example of the hydrogen non covalent bond it is very important for us to note that non covalent bond such as a hydrogen bond exists between a water molecule and another water molecule and there are lots of non covalent hydrogen bonds in a crystal lattice of ice or solid water on the right hand side picture we see the structure of water how you can say water is a bent molecule how we can say and we can realize and we can picture how water molecule is a tetrahedral molecule one water molecule can associate with four other water molecules in ice so in ice there may be up to four hydrogen non covalent bonds between a water molecule and the other molecules in the liquid form the number of hydrogen bonds will be less maybe 3 okay or maybe 2.5 and the water the hydrogen bonds or the non covalent hydrogen bonds will be very much less maybe zero non existent when the water is in the gas phase there are other examples in our body not just between hydrogen water and water molecules there are hydrogen bonds which are examples biologically in our body but not between water and water it can be between an alcohol and a ketone it can be between an amine and a carbonyl group amine and amide group so please remember that non covalent hydrogen bonds not only exist between water molecules themselves they may also exist between other types of molecules so here is a slide showing you other types of hydrogen bonds also between nucleic acids later on you will learn about nucleic acids at the moment we see these are not water molecules these are guanine and cytosine molecules but between them there are examples of hydrogen non covalent long range low energy bonds okay other types of non covalent interactions in our body there are charge to charge interaction note that the energy can be between 40 to 200 kJ per mole there are hydrogen bonds as we have seen between water and water they are very low energy between 2 to 20 there are hydrophobic interactions in our body okay and they are also very low there are van der waal interactions these are also non covalent all these are examples of non covalent interactions we will see when we come to look at the protein structure that not only do we have one type of non covalent bonding which is the hydrogen bond now we have discussed hydrogen bond uh, extensively when we are talking about the structure of water later on when we talk about structures of proteins and structures of carbohydrates and lipids we will see such other examples also exist for non covalent bonding there may be charge to charge interaction there may be because the molecules and the bonds that are within the molecules they are vibrating they are shaking and vibrating all the time so this uh causes the electronic field to create energy that may have some interaction between each other so these are also examples of non covalent interactions non covalent bonding 
Here is a slide showing you the relative energies. You do not have to remember these numbers. All you have to note is that when the bonding is covalent or ionic, which are, exam which are examples given on this slide on the top of the table, CC bond, HH bond, ionic bond, they are in the hundreds and two hundreds kilojoules per mole. Whereas the non-covalent bonds are lower down, the hydrogen bond, the hydrophobic interaction, Van der Waals interaction, they are in the tens or in single figures, 2.44 kilojoules per mole. If I ask you a question in the exam, I will not ask you to say what is the exact number or exact strength of the CC bond. No. All you will have to remember here at the moment is that covalent bonds are strong, they are short, they are high energy. Ionic bonds are also strong, but non-covalent bonds, which are examples of non-covalent bonds such as hydrogen bond, hydrophobic interaction, they are low energy, they are long range and they are weak, they are not strong, okay. Now, we now have to move on to, since we have now discussed what is the water structure, we now need to understand what is the relationship between the hydrogen ion concentration and the water molecules. So, what we need to start thinking is, if the water molecule splits, dissociates, dissociation of water molecule, if it was to happen by itself, without we adding acid or base to the solution, just in pure, pure water, where there is only water molecules. When there are only water molecules, then we expect the dissociation to be very, very low. Okay? And in the brackets, I have written probability of H plus to find an H plus in pure water is, as you can see from the number, 1.8 10 to the minus 9 is a very, very small number. What does that tell you? It tells us or it tells you that the dissociation if tiraq coming apart of the water molecule is very very small in pure water the equation that i have given you shows you that when you are looking at pure water the equation is to the left hand side showing you that Mainly in the pure water, you have only water molecules. You don't get H plus and OH minus, except a very, very small amount. In fact, we can say in 2 billion molecules of water, we may find one or half which is H plus, which has dissociated, which has come apart. Okay? So, if in the water, if in the pure water, there is some dissociation, the dissociation will be very, very small. And if there is an H plus or an OH minus present in the pure water, what we have seen with sodium chloride will happen here also, meaning the H plus will get surrounded by water molecules. So, they will become hydrated H plus and the OH minus also will become surrounded by water molecules. So, they will become hydrated OH minus or hydrated hydroxide ion. Okay? So, in this slide, when we begin to look at the relationship between pH, we will define in a minute what is pH. And water, first of all, we need to have some knowledge about the amount of dissociation that takes place in water, which is what we have said just now, is very, very small. The dissociation of water molecules in pure water is very small, okay? 
if there were some then the H plus and the OH minus will get surrounded by water molecules giving you H3O plus or H5O2 plus or H7O3 plus. What is H3O plus? It's telling you it is an H plus plus one molecule of water. And likewise, the second one is two water molecules, one H plus. And the last one, H7O3 plus means one H plus three water molecules. So they are hydrated or hydronium ions. How does the ionization of water takes place? Well, we can understand from this slide. And then we can think about how to calculate how much or how is the concentration. What is the concentration? What is the amount of H plus in pure water? If we had pure water only at room temperature, 25 degrees, okay, one atmospheric pressure, normal atmospheric pressure. So in this pure water, if we were to calculate how much ionization is taking place or how much ionization exists in the water, then we need to calculate the concentration of H plus and OH minus. How we can do that? By looking at a constant called KEQ, equilibrium constant. What does this constant stand for? It is the concentrations of the product of all the species that have dissociated. For us in the water, we will have H plus OH minus. So the concentration of H plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus divided by the undissociated species, which is the water molecules. So we have some numbers. Mathematically, we can say, we can look it up in the library, in some books, it will tell you. The equilibrium constant of water, in pure water, is 1.8, 10 to the minus 16 molar. M molar is the unit of measuring concentration. And the concentration of water molecules in water is 55.5 molar. So we can see very quickly by just looking at the numbers that the dissociation is very small. Can everyone see that? Can everyone realize that looking at these numbers, it is telling us that the dissociation constant for water is very small. That means we understand now that the dissociation is very small in the water, in pure water. Most of the molecules remain molecules in pure water. Only very, very small amount gets dissociated. That small amount we can calculate by using mathematics, multiplying 1.8 10 to the minus 16 by 55.5 will give us the Kw. Kw is the ionic product of water. It is the product of how many species or how many molecules have actually dissociated. So we have 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 equivalent or equal to concentration of H plus multiplied by OH minus. If we now use mathematics, then we can say, because in the water, if we have one H plus, then we will also have one OH minus. So it is the same. H plus concentration is the same as the OH minus concentration in pure water. And I emphasize and I tell you again and again, we are looking at pure water. Pure water should show us that the concentration of H plus is equal to the concentration of OH minus and it is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. Okay, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar, we can say it is the concentration of H plus or the concentration of OH minus in pure water. Because from this 
slide number 23 now we can see and try to understand and try to comprehend the dissociation of water is very small the constant represents the product of the dissociated species divided by the concentration of the undissociated undissociated water the square brackets tell you that this is concentration concentration and k stands for the dissociation constant okay have a look at this slide now we will be able to understand why h plus is 1 10 to the minus 7 if you look at one mole of water it is 18 how do we get 18 oxygen is 16 hydrogen there are two of them one each therefore 18 if we are looking at grams and not kilograms then we have to look at one liter of water which will be 1000 milliliters divided by 18 will give us 55.5 which is the molarity of pure water of water molecules in pure water therefore now we can calculate from the probability the chance of finding h plus in pure water as we have seen in previous slides 1.8 10 to the minus 9 multiplied by 55.56 will give us 1 10 to the minus 7 what we now do is to understand what is ph ph is the negative log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration so if we now know that h plus concentration in pure water is 110 to the minus 7 we can use a calculator and press on log to the base 10 multiply by minus 1 which is negative we will come to ph now ph equals the negative log of h plus concentration and for pure water pH is 7 I ask you a question what is pOH in pure water pOH is the negative log of OH minus concentration and we will find that it is exactly the same so pure water is 7 we say when you have pH equal to 7 the solution is neutral it's not acidic it's not basic it's in the middle pH when it is becoming less than 7 we call it acidic when it is more than 7 we call it basic a man by the name of Sorensen about a hundred years ago looked at lots of hydrogen ion concentrations in lots of fluids and he came up with this equation that pH which we now understand as the log or the negative log of H plus concentration can be calculated and we find a pH scale meaning that the pH range starts from 0 and goes up to 14 okay on the right hand side of this picture we can see one molar hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and the pH if we were to measure the H plus concentration in hydrochloric acid one molar we'll find it will be close to very 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 close to zero if we then move up to the other side if you take one molar sodium hydroxide solution you measure is H plus the H plus will come to about 14 pH pH will come to about 14 okay it is a log scale 0 to 14 is a log scale meaning the difference between 1 and 2 or 1 and 3 or 4 and 5 it's not just one it is actually one pH unit which is a log scale meaning there is a factor of 10 multiplied by 10 we can take some examples and calculate these pHs and we can have a look at now on the 
right hand side of the slide we see some solutions from our body from the human being for example human milk or human gastric content or gastric juices human pancreatic juices we find the pH somewhere between 1 and 2 for gastric juice what is that telling you it is very acidic what about pancreatic juice it is between 8 and 9 so it means it is basic it's more than 7 so it is basic human blood our human blood or the plasma is around 7.4 therefore it is almost neutral if we look at cow's milk cow's milk is about 6.6 6.5 therefore it is also very much neut neutral if we look at some tomato juice or we look at coca cola or we look at pepsi some drinks that are having lots of carbon dioxide in it what we will expect to be the pH of these solutions? pH of these solutions will be around 2 to 3, around 3 pH units. Okay. So we now conclude this lecture by looking at the importance of pH. We now know what is pH. If someone asks you what is pH, we can answer to them pH is the negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. It is a measure of how much H plus is there in the water or in solution. How much is the H plus solution? How much is the concentration of H plus in solution? We can calculate by using a pH. pH is measured by a meter called pH meter. And an electrode that is put into the solution, it measures the hydrogen ion concentration. You will have a feel and you will experience how to use a pH meter when you will go to the practical class and when you will measure pH of different solutions. In our body, we will find, for example, urine has a pH. It ranges between 6 to 6.5 in the mornings, six and a half to seven in the evenings. If you find this is the range, then your body is functioning very healthy. If you look at your sputum, your saliva, your saliva is also between six and a half and seven and a half all day. If you find it, then it is functioning within the healthy range. Many people who suffer from an unbalanced pH most of them are acidic. When our system or when our body pH is remaining acidic for a long time, this can create or this can cause many, many unhealthy conditions. For example, acidosis, we will look at what acidosis and alkalosis mean later on in the next lecture. But we can see from a list that is given to you on slide number 26, lots and lots of diseases and unhealthy conditions can happen because of acidity in our body. Now we know what is acidity, what is basicity, what is acidic, what is basic. Okay, so let us conclude then. So far, what we have done, in this lecture, we looked at the structure of water, we looked at the balance of water, we looked at the medical importance of water, we also looked at the dissociation of water, we looked at and we described and we understood now, we should be able to describe what are the non-covalent and the covalent bondings that can take place within the water solution. Why water is so important? There are functions of water, for example, in our body. The cell life, water is a carrier and distributor. It is giving the essential nutrients to our cells. Lots and lots of metabolic reactions take place in our body. 
they may be making bones creating or breaking bones and water helps us to remove a lot of these toxic chemicals that might be produced in our body by way of urine and feces water transports the nutrients from one place to another through our, through our body the body temperature is regulated by water water helps us to limit the changes in the body temperature our environment may cause and our uh, food and our uh, intake and excretion may cause the body temperature to be uh, changing therefore the water helps us to limit this change in the body temperature also the water can be eliminated from our body so it helps us for example in the uh, joints to lubricate lubrication can take place in the joints by water water can also act as a shock absorber for eyes for brain for spinal cord even for the fetus through ammoniotic fluid fluid the water helps us uh, by eliminating water is of benefit and it is functioning uh, it has good function the water has good function for our body okay so i now stop this lecture here and conclude to you that so far we have looked at the structure of water some functions some properties of water and we have started to calculate and get a feel of how much dissociation can there be in the water in pure water and how we can calculate the h plus and oh minus in solution jazakumullah khairan we'll see you in the next lecture